Hi, I'm Elle and that's Stevie. And in some past videos, we've been exploring how to use tools like GitHub Actions to automate parts of your machine learning and data science workflows. We've mostly used Python plus the CML library to report data viz and model metrics in GitHub. But you can use this approach with lots of languages, not just Python. And today I wanna to cover R. R is truly a powerhouse when it comes to data viz and reporting beautiful, uh, beautiful, clear, and aesthetically pleasing tables. So here, I want to show you how to make an automated data science workflow that will put a ggplot in your GitHub pull request. All right, let's jump into our code example. So what I've got is a GitHub repo that has some R code for analyzing a wonderful penguin data set that has some body size measurements and a couple other features about some penguins. Um, so definitely check out this data set. Um, and what we're gonna do in this data set and, and in this script is that we're gonna load in the data and we're gonna make a plot of how uh, it's different nose lengths, bill lengths among the penguins, um, how those are distributed by different species. So we're gonna make um, some histograms and then I'm just printing out a table that looks at average measures within each of the different species. So the outputs of this script are a plot and a table, the table's in uh, HTML, but that's only one of many formats that you can use when you're working with the, uh, the cable library for making beautiful and easy to read tables. Um, I'm not paid by them, I just really like them. Anyway, a um, couple other things here. We've got package managing with RN, if that's what I'm using to keep track of all of the package dependencies that are used and needed to run this script. Um, so what we're gonna do now is create a GitHub Actions workflow that will load in all the dependencies we need and then run this script and report back to us um, our picture and our table as a comment in the pull request. So the way that we're going to do this is like we create any other GitHub Action workflow. So we're gonna create a new file and it's gonna always be in the special GitHub workflows and let's call this yeah, penguinbeaks.yaml. All right, and in order to get kind of a template, what I'm gonna do is go to the CML um, GitHub repository and just go down here to our first kind of example. Um, and this here, I'm just gonna grab, I'm gonna grab this part here um, and we're gonna fill in the rest of it by ourselves, but this is kind of some, you know, it's like a template, it's pretty generic. So I'm gonna fill in your workflow name and I'm gonna call it penguins have long noses. Sure, I'm gonna keep the trigger be push. Um, so it'll just be, you know, what we're telling our GitHub Actions to do is listen for a push. When a push is detected, we're gonna run the workflow below. Um, I'm gonna keep this running on an Ubuntu machine. Um, so that's part of the machine that is gonna be managed totally by GitHub. They'll make sure we get an Ubuntu. Um, now for container, I'm gonna keep this container, although I, I don't actually need it to be a Python container because we're gonna be using R. So um, I'm gonna remove that, but we're grabbing our container. So this Docker container, make sure that you will get all the CML functions that are needed to generate visual reports. Um, but keep an eye out because we are going to be soon releasing um, a custom GitHub action so you can install the CML functions without using our Docker container and that should cut down on some of the time involved um, in the workflow. All right, now steps. So the first step we have is we're gonna, you know, this is standard, we're checking out our GitHub code, so just leave that in place. And now let's create a step called setup R and it will be uses. And we're gonna use the rlib actions. Um, so this is making sure that R gets installed on the machine, on the runner. Um, and this is maintained by R Studio. It's pretty great. Um, and let's do another step, name, setup, dependencies. Um, let's do uses. And for this here, actually I'll just do this, run. Okay. And what I'm gonna do now is kind of provide some commands that will be run in the, uh, you know, basically the command line of our, our runner. 
Um, and they're gonna be, I'm just calling R, and what I wanna do is install dot packages, and I'm gonna make sure that we have our env is provided, um, so that makes sure that we can use our, you know, dependency management system. And the next one will be R and run R env restore, and that will recreate the environment um, indicated on our rnv.lock file so that we have all of the dependencies, all the libraries ready to go, and we won't get an error that says like no library named ggplot2 found. Okay, so now let's go right into our workflow. Analyze some penguin beaks. Okay. And for this, in order to use um, CML, what you're gonna have to specify are some environmental um, variables. Actually, it's only one. And this is always gonna be the same no matter what. Um, you will have secrets.github token, and by always the same no matter what, I mean anytime you're using the CML functions, you wanna provide this value called repo token, and this is actually something that comes defined with your GitHub repository, so you don't actually have to set this. Just, if nothing I say makes sense, it's fine. Just make sure this line of code is here. Um, okay, now we're gonna do run, and I'm gonna provide the script that we're gonna be running on the machine now. So we'll do r, rnv run, and this is saying run in the context of, you know, this project and all its dependencies that we are managing, penguin analysis.r. Okay, and now it's time to use one of our CML functions. So what CML functions do is they help take things like the plot, right? We made a plot, it's gonna be a PNG, um, and it's gonna help us put that in a comment that is displayed on our pull request. So it looks like this, CML publish my penguin plot.png. And remember, this is not a file that currently is in the repository. It's a file that is generated when we run this script here, and then it will exist on the runner. So CML publish my penguin plot.png. And we're gonna use this um, MD flag for markdown. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pipe it onto a, just a, made up markdown document called report.md and I'm now gonna do CML send comment report.md and that is going to take that report and put it in our pull request. So I think this is pretty good. So the workflow is we're going to install R, we're going to set up some dependencies, make sure that we have all the libraries that we need to run our script and then we're going to run the script and publish one of the pictures. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna call this create my workflow and I'm gonna do create a new branch and let's call it workflow and propose new file. So what I'm doing now is I'm opening a pull request. Um, create pull request, okay. And now you can see that we have this yellow dot and this, this stuff here tells us that we are running a job, right? So GitHub Actions are saying, you know, whenever there's a push detected, um, that's when you run the script and we made a push. So if we go to details, we can see what's going on. We've got this dashboard and this is that we're, we're really looking inside the logs of the computer that is currently running our workflow. So we did the setup, we're initializing the container. This step always takes a little bit because um, we're, we're pulling a Docker container. Um, then we're gonna set up our dependencies, analyze some penguins and stop containers. Okay, so let's just head back here and sit tight. Um, yeah, it's kind of boring, you just sit. It's kind of nice to have some like you know, just sit down and wait time, you know. It's kind of like how some people get to compile for a while and then they can do whatever they want, have a coffee break. Um, I think that's a real advantage. It's a feature, not a bug. Okay, it's done. All right, now that means that if I refresh, here we go, here is our diagram. It's our first ggplot in our pull request. And just to kind of zoom out and give you some context, what this looks like is, you know, when I look at my pull request, I have 
this plot here um, and everybody can discuss that. So let's go a little further now and add the table, right? So remember the script we have for analyzing penguins doesn't just output, you know, a plot, it can also put out a table. So if we go back to our code and let's make sure we're on the right branch. Let me zoom in again. Okay. Here we go. And let's go onto our workflow file again and edit. Okay. So now we're gonna add, so here we had done add picture, and now let's do add table. And so we're gonna use, um, we've got, remember this file, mymodel.html is contain, you know, contains um, what is, whatever the data is created by this script here. Um, and I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna do cat my model .html, So just dump the contents of it um, into report.md um, and now send report. So now our report should have our picture and our table and we're gonna send it. Okay, so I'm now going to commit this and I will say add table to the report. And let's go. Okay, I did that. And now when we go to the pull request, we have the yellow dot again, indicating that we're working. All right, here we are, add table to the report, yellow dot and details. Uh, here we go, running the workflow again. It's gonna run every time from scratch. So it takes a little bit of time because of what you're doing is you're completely creating, you know, setting up R, installing the packages that our script depends on, and then running the script itself. Um, so that's why this can take a little while. And kind of one of the reasons why, even though this is obviously slower than working, you know, on your own local machine, um, there's kind of a, a benefit to using this for testing. Um, so, you know, maybe you make something locally and then you want to check, does it, will it run and create similar results in this highly constrained environment where, you know, it's pretty trivial to recreate the software environment, the infrastructure, so what type of machine is running your computer, running your workflow, um, as well as all the code. So it's, it's kind of like some extra engineering rigor. Um, at the expense of the time taken to produce the result. So, you know, it's kind of a trade-off. And so, you know, you have to be strategic about where this fits in your workflow. Um, but I do think for collaborative projects and especially, you know, the longer your data scales, like, you know, the bigger your data, um, the more complex, I, I think that there's some, some real benefit to automating some of your tests or some of your reporting to happen inside GitHub. Oh, and friendly reminder that um, all of this can also be done in GitLab, and we recently released Bitbucket. So Bitbucket support, Bitbucket cloud, not Bitbucket server. Those are, turns out, quite different products, um, but you can check out our Bitbucket cloud support. All right, okay, we'll just sit here now and wait. All right, all right, it's done. Uh, so if I refresh, hopefully everything will look how we want and boom, there's our table. Okay, so I'll zoom out a little bit so you can kind of see everything in context. But what we had was our first commit and we got this. We made a change, we've added the table and now we have the table here. Um, oh, it looks so good, look at that beautiful shading. Um, okay, now I'm gonna do one more thing um, that I hope kind of demonstrates some of the power of this approach, and that's what if our data set changed? Um, so what I'll do is I will go back to code and um, I'm gonna go into make sure that we're on my branch that we're playing with. And um, this time instead of modifying the workflow, because I, I like the workflow, I want that to run every time that we get a push. I'm really happy with it. So what I'm gonna do is actually modify our, our script. So right now we have data coming from one source, um, 
but I'm just gonna take some code. Um, I'm gonna add a little something to it. I'm gonna add a new data source. So this is a data set about um, penguins. And so it's always possible that somebody will come along and say, hey, I've discovered a whole bunch of new penguins. Would you please add this to your data set? Um, so I'm just copying some code that I have locally. Um, so if it looks like magic, that's why I just I just put it in a notepad. Um, and what this is is uh, just basically some code to grab um, a CSV that is in my Google Drive. It's shareable to you, so you should be able to run this too. And I'm saying just grab this new new data set and add it to our penguins data frame, and then everything else will continue as usual, except with our brand new class of penguins. All right, I'm going to commit on the workflow branch. And let's see, let's see. OK, pull, go back to our pull request. And again, I'll zoom in. And here we are, create the workflow. We got our first, our first commit, our second commit, and we're waiting on this workflow, which corresponds to, to this last commit. And so we'll just sit tight again. Um, what I like to do when I'm, you know, when I'm waiting for things to run is I, I like to go on Instagram and look at puppies. Um, that's a great dog channel. Um, I also, I really, I really like the corgis. They're so, they're so stubby. There we go. Yeah, those are great. And with the endless scroll, there's kind of just endless, endless puppies. Ah, here it is. All right, okay. Let's see, give it a refresh. We know it runs because we got the green check and we would have gotten a horrible red X if we didn't. Okay, here it is. So here's our plot now with our new species of penguin, DV, which as you can see has a very short nose and hence is down here. Um, but the real magic is that we have this GG plot, we have this table, and you know now it will happen in our pull request every time we push. So I'll say, great, I love this, let's merge. And then the next time I get a change in my data set or I'm doing some work on my modeling or you know maybe I come up with a new plot that I wanna have kind of as a diagnostic, um, then I'll create a pull request and I can do this again. All right. Thanks for watching. If you thought this was interesting, then check out more of the GitHub Actions for our library, which I'll link to below. And as always, I would love to hear your ideas, any pain points or suggestions that you get for automating with any of the tools that we looked at here and specifically in the R language. So thanks for now and we'll catch you later.